Welcome back guys. So in this week's video, we're doing another episode of making money with smalls. And for any of you guys out there that are new to the channel, it's all about high profit, low cost items. And that is what it takes to make money with woodworking. So what we do is we find popular and hot selling items and break those down to see just how simple that they can be made. I get messages daily from people that have taken some of these ideas or maybe even just one of these ideas and have turned it into a high profit side hustle or even a business. And there's one particular item that I'm going to be covering that really caught my eye that I thought that would be a huge seller. And it's this farmhouse calendar. And in this video, I'm going to teach you step by step on how to make two of these farmhouse calendars using only one two by four. And if you decide to build any of this stuff, make sure to send it to the brag board. I'll throw a link into the description. The brag board is just where people can go to post their brags, any of their builds. And while you're there, make sure to check out our Patreon community. It is still growing like crazy and getting better every week. So I have a ton of stuff to cover. So let's go ahead and jump into this video. So for this first one, this is going to be an example of wall art. This is pretty cool, but is it $206.99 cool? I don't know where they get the 99 cents. I don't know, it's like a, you're buying gas or something. But this is one from Wayfair. I need to come up with a nickname for Wayfair because they actually have a lot of cool ideas. I'm just gonna call it, we'll just call it WF. This is from the Wayfair, the WF, and this is what they are considering a geometrical wall art. It's not like the other geometrical stuff that we've seen, but they're actually calling this geometric wall art. But basically what they're doing is they're layering different color strips. So we have our long strips going down the center and then we have our arrows, okay? So those arrows are just 45 degree angles. So that's it. That's the only angles that you would have to cut to make this. And they did not even cut that because if you actually zoom in a little bit and look at these angles, there's no seams and the grain is still going the same direction. So this is cut out of plywood. For a $207 piece of wall art, they're using plywood and they're using thin plywood. So this thing is 16 by 32 inches long and an inch and a half thick. So that tells me that the boards are half of an inch thick each and they're about two inches wide. So to start with, you just make all of your gray 45 degree arrows that you see in the background. And remember, they're 16 inches wide. Make sure to put the 45s on the opposite end to get that 16 inch width. And the next layer is going to be the white boards. And I would patch these with wood glue and just brad nails. And the third layer is gonna be the brown arrows that are on top. So for the trim, this is an inch and a half thick, but it looks like it covers the material about an inch. I don't know if you have priced any type of edge trimming at the store here lately, but just like your normal 45 degree edge trimming in a solid wood, it's three, four dollars a foot. It's ridiculous. So make your own. This is what you need to make. So we have an inch and a half that would sit on the side. And then we also have our inch that would cover the edges. Super easy to make. I made this in the table saw right before making this video. And I started with just a two by two that I cut out of a two by four. Could have made it even smaller because I did not have to use the whole thing. That's all you have to do is determine how thick you want it. I left it a quarter of an inch and raise your blade enough to cut a square out of the middle. Piece of pie to make and it will save you a ton of money. And that's if you decided to make trim like this, you wouldn't even have to. And if you'd like to just take flat stock, put it around the edges, it would look perfectly fine. But this is what's going to seal the deal to make it fancy. Now, will you get $207 for it? No, don't try to get 207 bucks for it. Will you get $75 for it? That's what I'll go for. And this next one is another one from the WF. And what caught my eye about this one was not only the price, but it was actually pretty neat. And so this is a $200 jewelry holder that spins. And if you look at it, what's it look like to you? Looks like just a couple of pieces of wood that are spinny. So that little spinny action is what's making this thing 200 bucks. I don't care if it spins and does a backflip off the table. It's not worth 200 bucks. So the spinning mechanism that they're using is actually a custom made one. It's just mounted to that bottom board and then it's a rod that goes up into that board. But I figured out a workaround for that. Looks like everything here is made out of two by tens. Two by tens right now in my area are 10 bucks a piece. And you can make a couple of these out of one board. So you would distress up your material however that you would like it, stain it, paint it, whatever. But to make this rotating effect, we're gonna be using Lazy Susan parts. Not like the Lazy Susans that you put your canned goods and mixers and stuff like that on, but they're actually smaller ones for like tabletop Lazy Susans. You know, we're like, instead of saying, pass me the salt, you know, you can just spin the little thing in the middle and it goes around. Anyway, so, those parts are dirt cheap. I actually found some on Amazon. So any of the parts for any of these items that I mentioned, I will throw a link into the description so you can check for them there. These Lazy Susan parts, I actually found a place that is selling two of these for $6.50. This is what they look like. 
The difference is, is they're square on both sides, whereas this is a rod. So let's say that you get the four inch Lazy Susan part, and we're gonna need a four inch board to go across the bottom of the width of the vertical board. So let's say that this is nine and a half inches wide. We're gonna need a four inch board that goes across the bottom and is nine and a half inches wide. So you'll have a board sitting like this with your two by 10 on the top, that's matching each edge. This will allow you to fasten your Lazy Susan here, and the base in this picture is about 15 inches long, but when you set this down on the base, it will allow the Lazy Susan parts to stick out enough whenever you turn it to actually get some screws in there. And that is a workaround for the actual spinning effect for this thing. Now, the one thing that I do not like about this is the hangers. So all of these wires that are sticking out kind of reminds me of an old cheap store. I know that they're going for the rustic look, but you don't want to have to get a tetanus shot after you get your jewelry. So what I would do is maybe get something like this. So these are little bronze hooks and this package actually comes with a hundred of them. So that brings the price down to about 16 cents a piece. So on this picture, they have 24 different areas to actually hang different types of jewelry on. That's only about $3 and 80 cents worth of hooks. Another option that I like to do when I'm making anything that hangs jewelry, coats, just anything that's kind of nice go to your local hobby lobby they run sales all the time on stuff like this so these little knobs they have a whole section on drawer pulls and whenever they go 50 percent off they're only like a dollar and a half a piece this one's actually porcelain but you put these maybe four per side for necklaces or things like that and it would really set this thing off and you can get them to look vintage you can get them to look however that you would like but the bottom line is is that you can build this thing for less than 12 bucks and they're wanting 200 dollars for it the farmhouse calendars again these things caught my eye because they're pretty cool and i would actually have one in my house so after seeing their version and the 60 dollar price tag i decided to do what i teach and make it myself put my own twist to it and this is how it came out super cool you can just slide these over to the date and these old looking label cabinet pulls really cool but you can just slide them over to whatever that you would like so before we jump into this video what i did not like about this one was the screws in the front. So this is supposed to be a vintage farmhouse calendar and they use brass Phillips head screws all down the front. Made sure to change that up and also did a couple other things as you'll see in the video to make this easier to assemble. In this video, I'll be teaching you step by step on how to make these, but as always, if you are a plans in the hand type of person, head over to the Etsy shop. The link's in the description. I have super detailed plans for these already up. Okay, so to start with, we're gonna cut our two by four by four in half. Then I'm gonna take an eighth of an inch off of each edge just to square the boards up. We'll set one of those boards aside because that will be our base. And then we'll start by cutting two three eighths of an inch thick strips off of the remaining board. Next, take the board that's left and rip it down into two one inch strips. So all of our parts so far are still an inch and a half wide. And we are needing two one by one and three one inch by three eighths inch thick strips. So where the saw is still set at one inch, just turn all of your material on its side and cut off that extra half of an inch. Now let's cut our two uprights down to 14 inches long and our three strips down to 20 inches long. The base needs to be cut to 21 inches long and then ripped in half. So with all of our parts cut, let's go ahead and start the assembly by marking out where our notches need to be in our uprights. The notches will need to be one inches wide and three eighths deep to hold our strips. And I want my first strip to be a half of an inch from the top and then three inches of spacing in between my last two strips. Now we just need to cut our one inch by three eighths inch deep notches. And there's several different ways that you can do this. I'm just using the depth stop on the miter saw, but you can even use a jigsaw. And now we need to cut notches in our two base parts. And these are gonna be going back together to basically surround a one by one. So we need to cut half of an inch deep notches in both pieces on both ends, one half of an inch from each end. So after we have all of our notches cut, let's go ahead and stain or paint all of our parts. Once that dries, we're going to go ahead and reattach our base parts. After applying wood glue, let's go ahead and put our uprights in place and clamp this to dry. While that is drying, go ahead and stamp your dates onto your strips. Don't forget to use even spacing for this. Next, we're just going to glue and clamp our strips into place. Now let's make our sliding viewing windows. For this, I'm going to be using wire staples and label holder pulls. After marking the staples for correct placement, I'm just going to attach the staples to the pulls using CA glue. And this is what it should look like. And you repeat this step for the middle slat. But the last slat, we're gonna do a little bit different. Since the numbers are smaller, the viewing window needs to be a bit smaller. So to fix this, I'm just gonna take a paint stick, line the label holder up with the edge, and cut off the end. And then we'll split that in half. Space the wood pieces so that there's a half of an inch gap in the middle, and then put CA glue on the outside edges. And that's the last piece to our rustic farmhouse calendar. 
So not including the stamps, you have around $5 in material for something that they want 60 bucks for. So that video is a perfect example of the profit margins that can be made with something as simple as this. Two of these out of one two by four, just by breaking this down and figuring out exactly how to do it. Now with something like this, this one is just completely natural, but I also made this one whenever I was making the other one. If you're gonna make one, you might as well make two or three. I've told you this before because you're going to have relatives that you didn't know that you had coming out of the woodwork wanting some. So shake it up a little bit. This is just a distressed blue gray. I'm not sure what the color is. It's robin egg or something. I don't know. It's blue gray. And then I just distressed it a little bit and gave it the farmhouse look. So the one thing to make these that you're going to have to purchase that I've mentioned in the past for several other projects is a set of stamps. Now they're dirt cheap. Again, links in the description for the ones that I use, but this is what I'm talking about. So total, you're gonna have about a $15 investment in the stamp set, but you can use those for multiple projects, not just this one. We've covered several projects where I've said, hey, just go get some rubber stamps and then I know what you're thinking. It decreases the profit margin because you spent $15 on a set of stamps. That's not how it works. That is a tool that will if you want to take it off, you can depreciate it. So you can get 100 projects out of this $15 stamp set, then it's 15 cents for this project. But you have to look at certain items like that as a tool that you will have for several projects to come. Okay, so for this next one, I know that we have talked about serving trays before, but serving trays are hot, they are just changing. So this is a perfect example of that. So now that they have taken this chevron or herringbone look and put it into a serving tray, this thing is super easy to make and they want $250 for this. This goes back to one of our older videos where we made the herringbone style planters. And if you zoom in and look at this stuff, all the parts in this tray are made out of straight up pallet wood material. So you can make this out of your pallet wood material and then you have your two handles that are on the side. Those handles, I found a 10 pack for $13 to a little over a buck a piece. Now this will have to be put on some sort of backing and that's what this edge trim is covering. Looks like that the edge trimming is about three quarters of an inch thick. If this pallet wood is a half of an inch, thick and our actual backing board will need to be a quarter inch plywood cut to the size of the tray that you would like to make and what tipped me off that this was pallet wood is that i zoomed way in and found this these are fresh staple marks so someone has actually pulled staples out of this material and there were several other fresh nail marks you can tell when a nail hole is fresh or if it's an old one these are fresh ones so pallet wood. So to assemble this thing, that's all that you will have to do is take your backboard and lay this out in this herringbone pattern. Don't worry if you go over the edges. Wait until the end and trim all of that off. Don't try to make perfect little cuts. Let it hang off the side and then just take it to your table saw or even use a skill saw to cut those edges off. But what I would do is glue all of these parts into place and then once that dries, flip that over and then put some brad nails in the back just for some extra hold. And we've already talked about these handles super easy to install so the edge trimming looks like it's about a half of an inch thick by three quarters of an inch wide just to cover that whole edge and if you actually zoom in and look right here that's all that they have done is glued and then put a ton of brad nails all the way down through there and this is a 250 dollars serving tray but what is making this different what is giving it this softer look if you notice through any of the pictures they're kind of staging it up with lighter colored items you zoom in here you can see where they have actually whitewashed this so whitewash is just a thin down white paint or you can buy some white stain. So the white stain is super thin and that's all that you would have to do is just glaze the top of all of this and then just wipe it off. It's gonna hang in any of the saw marks, any of the corners, things like that, and give it this white glazed hue. And then I would just finish it off with a urethane. Now these things are super nice, not 250 bucks nice, at least not in my area, they may be in your area, but check out your market and price these things accordingly. But for less than $5 of material, you can make this $250 tray. Now don't try to sell these things for $250 for $75 people will buy them if you can replicate this look and while we're talking about the trays I'm just going to give you this one as one more quick example so that's all that they have done is kept it simple they just cleaned this board up put a nice finish on it and put two of those handles on there so again if you buy these handles in bulk they're only like a buck and a quarter a piece but there are a ton of different things that you can do with them so they have about two dollars and fifty cents in handles the price is a slab which this is a small piece and is narrow and they're wanting a hundred dollars for this so pretty much this shows you that you can put a couple of handles on about anything and it's a serving tray. And so this one from the WF is actually pretty neat and it is original. It is actually older wood. So what actually sets this piece off to the point that they can charge $92 for it is that it is actually authentic reclaimed wood. If you zoom in and look at it, it's the real deal. So that's all that they've done is taken a reclaimed two by four and then half lapped each side where they intersect. Just like in the video where we half lapped these pieces. 
They did the exact same thing, except these are larger pieces. So you can actually do it with a circular saw. You can do it with a table saw. You can do it with a jigsaw. You can do it with however that you would like. But they're just half lapped and inset. So this will sit flush against the wall. The natural distressing and aging sets that off. And if you just look around, you can find this type of material, especially two by four material, because everyone is wanting the wider stuff. So the two by four material either gets tossed to the side or you can pick it up for dirt cheap. Again, this is a super neat item that would be an easy sale or even a fundraiser for your local church. And this next one is from the WF. I'm going to explain this a little bit. So I've always joked around that the PB could sell anything, right? So we talked about how they went out to the firewood pile to make live edge rounds for coasters, cake plates, chargers, whatever, which is actually a good idea. And the WF has actually stepped it up a notch with this sculpture. So after seeing this, I kind of got the idea, hey, I've got a firewood pile. Let's see what I can make. And that's what I came up with. So they won $105 for their hollow firewood sculpture. So I think I'm going to undercut them and I'm going to sell this one for 60 bucks. Today only, $60, useless firewood because it's actually hollow. They have one up the PB. The PB actually used useful firewood. You could burn it to keep warm. So they have taken something that is not even desired to be burnt as firewood and made a sculpture. And so I'm poking fun of them a bit, kind of like I do the PB. But typically when I poke fun at one of these companies, there's usually a lesson that's kind of intertwined with that. And if you made it this far into the video, obviously you like the Smalls That Sell series. So make sure to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. The point of me even showing you this is they are selling these things. Again, they would not take the time to put it on their website, put it on their shelves if they were not selling. So yes, I made fun of this. I think it's actually pretty cool and it's just a couple sticks put down on a piece of wood. Would I give anything like 105 bucks? No, I may use it as a paperweight. But this goes back to we're not making items that we like because I think that this looks crazy does not mean that everyone else thinks that it looks crazy. Obviously, there's a ton of people out there that like this stuff. And that is what I've been trying to tell you about and talk about throughout these episodes. We are not making these items for ourselves, the things that we like. We are making the things that other people like. I'm just using this as an example. And the main takeaway is, is that everyone looks at something a little bit different. Kind of like a few episodes back where I carved that bench. And so that is today's main takeaway. The reason why these items sell and they sell for so much is because in some way or another, they are unique. They're not something that everyone else is making. And that's what you have to do in order to succeed in business with woodworking is be able to see what other people cannot. Someone saw this and they said, hey, this is art. You have to think the same way. You have to be able to use your creativity to look past it, what you are actually seeing, to see what it could be. I know that sounds like it's something that is hard to do, but that is thinking creatively, that is thinking divergently. And that is a skill that you have you just have to unleash it. Take a random object that you find out somewhere, preferably wood-based, maybe an old door, maybe an old shutter, maybe an old window. Come up with something completely different and unique, and this will start to train your brain to think outside of the box, think divergently, and create unique items with super high profit margins. And everything that I've showed you in this video is low cost, could have very high profit margins. And pretty much everything that I make on this channel is the same way. Some items are considered small and some are larger. Take for example, the dog steps that I made a few weeks ago. I paid $30 in material to make those dog steps and I sold them for $300. So that's gonna be some of the easiest types of money that you can make. So low cost, high profit, that's the name of the game when it comes to business. And that's what we focus on on this channel. But if you've been watching the series and you've been interested and you just haven't started the journey yet, it is time. Do not let fear failure hold you back or you're going to be in the same place a year from now it's up to you and you are the only one that can do it till next time guys we'll see you